Watson. Hello, my summer carers. In the previous two videos, we talked about why Satsuma accelerates poorly and why its engine explodes, rumbles into parts, or refuses to stop. Check the link in the description to watch the full playlist about troubleshooting Satsuma. Today we will talk about engine oil, the cooling system, and what happens if you don't keep track of them. Let's go! Stable engine requires coolant to circulate between the engine and the radiator, passing through the hoses and the water pump. In Satsuma, coolant is poured directly into the radiator during assembly. However, even at this stage, the first silent enemy awaits you – the clamps on the pipes. I already talked about them in the video about four reasons why Satsuma is burning. The danger is that it is impossible to see whether the clamps are tightened or not. Check each of them with a screwdriver and make sure they are tightened. If you omit this moment, the coolant will literally merge in one lap along the road. As it leaks, the radiator will go less and less with the heat. The engine will heat up and the temperature on the sensor will rise. The less coolant, the hotter. The pressure sensor of the cooling system will help you understand that the system is leaking. Its pointer will be at its minimum. During normal use at 100 km per hour after a short ride, the pressure should be within 10 psi. But the most interesting thing will happen when the coolant is completely drained. The coolant temperature sensor will not show anything. If there is no liquid, there is nothing to measure. As a result, after a couple of miles, the engine overheats and breaks down. Pistons fly out, the block or the head gasket breaks. You will not feel any sign before the breakdown. The temperature sensor is within normal limits. Steam doesn't come out of the radiator. Considering that the temperature sensor stops working, buy a set of gauges from the catalog. It's a must-have thing if you're experiencing problems with overheating. If coolant has leaked out, the pressure sensor will remain at 5 psi mark during extended driving. Under normal conditions, on a warmed-up car at 100 km per hour, the pressure will be around 10 psi. When overheated, the pressure will rise up to 14 psi and you will see steam from the radiator. The first steam is already a reason to switch off Satsuma, so that the engine cools down. Meanwhile, you may check what went wrong. All this applies not only to the clamps, but in general to any other coolant leakage. For example, you removed the pump or changed the radiator or removed hoses. If troubles overtakes you on the way, the car has not broken down yet and there is no coolant anymore, check the clamps and bolts on the pump. Then be smart and be into the radiator. If you like, you can save on buying coolant. Now a few words about the radiator itself, the temperature sensor and their connection. As I said, the sensor measures the temperature of the coolant if the car has it. As soon as it reaches the middle, up to 80 degrees, the car will reach its ideal temperature. If the radiator fails and the temperature continues to rise, the fan turns on. If this doesn't happen, you need to check the wiring from the radiator. If the fan doesn't run at temperatures below 80, this is normal. The game has two radiators, the stock one and the aftermarket one. Obviously, the last one cools better and I definitely recommend it for purchase. The water pump provides the movement of coolant within a circle, in real life two circles. It wears down with use, and the worse it is, the worse it rotates and it copes worse with coolant. If you notice that the temperature begins to rise, the pump fully stops or coolant leaks, try changing the pump. To do this, remove the belt, unscrew the pulley and then the pump itself and buy a new one from the mechanic. As a result, the coolant will completely drain out and you will need to fill in new liquid. Most likely, you will notice pump problems when you hear a whistling sound. If you look under the hood, you will see that the belt is rubbing against the jammed pump. If you ignore the whistle, the belt will break, 
the alternator will stop charging the battery, the battery will die, and the engine will overheat with all the consequences – flying pistons, a punctured head gasket, hose in the oil pan or in the block. At least the valves do not bend like in real life. By the way, if you have coolant leaks, check if all the bolts are tightened on the pump itself under the pulley. It's a very common problem. As we found out, the belt that connects a crankshaft pulley with an alternator and a pump plays an important role in this whole process. The belt is tensioned using the alternator. The ideal tension is two scrolls back from the extreme right position. Over tightening wears the belt out and it breaks faster, and low tension will cause the belt to fly off. Take a spare one with you just in case. Belts are bought in the store. Now let's shift our attention towards the engine. The head gasket stands between the block itself and the seat in the head. It is needed to keep gases in the combustion chamber and both oil and coolant in certain channels. It's a number one part that will break in my summer car. When its lifespan is ending, you may see white smoke coming out from the hood and from the exhaust pipe at the same time. This means that oil and coolant are leaking out of the engine at this moment. Noticing this, you urgently need to go to the mechanic and buy a new head gasket. If you ignore it, the head gasket will eventually break and you will see a cartoon. Oil and coolant will instantly spill out and when the car finally breaks, under the hood you will see a curved, cracked head gasket sticking out from the engine. So when you see white smoke after another rush, hurry to the mechanic. The replacement is simple. In addition, I should say that its condition is strongly influenced by engine overheating and vehicle mileage. Overheating can be caused not only by the cooling system, but also by the oil. There are only two problems with it. There is little oil or the oil is dirty. Oil is also filled before the first launch of Satsuma. The first troubles arise if the bolts on the oil pan are not tightened. These are 8 bolts by 7 and the drain plug, 1 by 13. There are a couple of bolts that are hard to see, especially under the starter. Check them if oil continues to leak. In other cases, the oil does not go away so quickly and you will have time to notice the leak before it disappears completely. Firstly, a red light under the speedometer will inform you about the lack of oil. You will also see how the oil pressure drops on additional gauges. The lack of oil will also be shown by the temperature sensor. The temperature will surely rise above 80 degrees. It is logical that the less lubrication in the moving part of the engine, the more it heats up. The oil will go away when the head gasket is punctured or when the pistons are worn out. I talked about it in the first video about breakdowns, see the playlist in the description. Let me remind you that a dead head gasket gives white smoke from the hood and from the exhaust, dead pistons give blue smoke from the exhaust pipe. There is another thing, if you see drops under the engine, check if the oil filter has been unscrewed accidentally. It is tightened by hand without tools and careless scrolling can weaken it. Even in ideal Satsuma, as in any real car, the oil eventually works out its resource and loses its lubricating qualities. At the same time, it collects dirt and other particles that are quite natural when the engine is running. Long story short, engine oil darkens over time. In the game, this happens every 500 km, and you should check the condition of the oil. To do this, use the dipstick by which you can see both the level and the color of the oil. If it's dark, it's time to go to the store and buy a canister and new oil filter. If the oil is dark, then the filter is also dying and it is stupid to ignore it. Changing oil is simple. To do this, unscrew the filter by hand. Unscrew the bolt by 13 on the oil pan, wait a little, then screw it back. Install and tighten a new filter, then pour oil. Ideally, change the oil every 200 km without waiting for it to darken. Don't let Satsuma dry up and subscribe to the channel, I will upload the next episode when the channel gets 800 subscribers. Next, you'll see problems with the transmission, electrics and suspension. Thanks for watching, stay well!